uh, Dr. Deepashree here. I'm sure all of us come across uh, unique people in our day-to-day uh, -day lives, whether it is um, Abdul Kalam or uh, Steve Jobs or uh, Barack Obama. You may call anybody, and uh, you can you can just count in your fingers. Uh, maybe they fall under of the population, not under 95% of the population. Now, why is it that, you know, we have very few people who fall into that unique category, but most of, uh, most of us, rather, we fall into that 95% category. So this is Dr. Deepa Shri, live on Facebook on Chola MS General Insurance. And I'm an interventional radiologist, a Zumba instructor. I'm an author of two books. I'm also a motivational speaker, and I'm also a holistic healer. I'm with you to share with you all some of the tips that you can incorporate in your daily lives to fall into that 5%, which you can count in fingers. If you want to be in that 5%, then this is the right session for you. So here I have the, the very first one. See, most of us, um, when we, uh, you know, the, I think, I, rather, most of us, we tend to have something called as a sheep mentality or the herd mentality. Now, if you want to be unique, we need to come out of this sheep mentality. Now, what do I mean by sheep mentality? It could be as simple as uh, wearing tone jeans or uh, watching some interesting series on Netflix. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, if everybody is uh, drinking alcohol, if everybody wants to go for some interesting uh, drug because it is going to give them some kind of an excitement, we all fall into that particular trap. And if just because everyone is doing something, it doesn't mean it is the right thing. I always believe in the fact that right things are not always popular and popular things are not always right. So just because something is popular, just because everybody follows it, it doesn't mean we need to follow that. We need to trust our intuition. We need to trust our intelligence and we need to do the right things. So if you if you believe that uh, you know following the herd is the way to go, but I don't think we should do that. And that is the number one thing that I would like to share with you all with regards to the sheep mentality, which most of us do. Even, um, uh, you know, watching some of the series on Netflix, which kills or takes so much of our time. And uh, unfortunately, this is the one which creates loss of focus. We get distracted because of the amount of time that we spend on our phones, um, on the TVs or whatever you may want to call. Uh, so that is the number one thing if you want to fall into that unique 5% category, make sure that you don't fall into that herd mentality. Just be unique. The other thing that I would like to share with you all is about the smart work. Uh, quite often, uh, you come across a lot of people um, wherein you see hardworking people. Now, what is the difference between the hard work and smart work? I believe in the Pareto principle. I'm sure most of you would have uh, known about this Pareto principle wherein you work 20% of the time, but you generate 80% result. Yeah. So the Pareto principle is about working 20% of the time to generate 80% of the result, as opposed to working 80% of the time to generate 20% result. Smart work is all about efficiency. It doesn't mean that you should skive away from work and you shouldn't work. It's not about that. Smart work is always about efficiency. It's always about prioritizing that we often fail to do. And quite often, you know, all these things, whatever I'm talking today, it's not something new. You all would probably know these things, but it's just that we don't put these things into action. Whatever we know, we don't put these things into action. We would probably try once or twice and then we just give up. If it doesn't work, we just give up. The most important thing for all of us to do is put these things into action. Now, how can you put these things into action? Everything is a baby step. You can never achieve everything. Rome was not built in a day. And we need to do uh, take small baby steps so that we can put these things into action. And over a period of time, you're going to see the results. And that is where your smart work comes in. One important thing I would like to share with regards to the smart work is something called as a two minute rule. Uh, I mean, most of you uh, right now, if you just look at some of the pending tasks, sometimes and it could be as simple as returning a phone call. It could be as simple as returning a mail or, uh, you know, couriering something which is very important. But that particular packet or that particular message will be lying in your mailbox for months and months and you forget to return the message and that decreases your efficiency. So the two minute rule is all about any task, if it can be done in less than two minutes, try to finish the task immediately. 
Now, if you remember right now, I mean, not right now, as of now, you just need to listen to me for the next 15 minutes. But then once we are done with the talk, so if you have anything important to do, if it takes less than two minutes, it could be returning a call to somebody or calling someone important, please do that right away. And uh, that is where your smart work, your prioritizing, uh, your two minute rule, everything comes in and put this into action. And that is the most important thing. So not knowing what, you know, just knowing whatever I'm speaking today, knowledge is different and putting these things um, into action is something different. So please try and do whatever I'm saying today. And again, baby steps, one step at a time and you will reach there. So that is about your uh, smart work. And uh, the other important thing uh, that I would like to share is about facing the fear. Now, quite often, we all have got this fear of the unknown. Um, for example, I had a fear of uh, swimming for a long time. I, um, I mean, I didn't, I, I had a fear, fear of water, so I would never jump, jump into water until I was in my 30s. I didn't explore uh, swimming at all. This was, this is nothing but fear of unknown because you just look at some random stories or you would have had that experience of water when you were a child. Uh, it might have been a horrible experience. So you have this fear. So you don't want to jump into water because of that. So this the fear, facing the fear is something that we all must do. Face the beast face the fear, and the magic is always outside the comfort zone. When I say fear, it's not just fear, it's about feeling comfortable as well. We always try to draw a line around us because it's quite uh, you know, nice to be inside that comfort zone. When you try to jump out of the comfort zone, anything which is uncomfortable, you try not to do that. And for me, jumping into water was not the most comfortable thing to do. Changing my job, was not the most comfortable thing to do. But then I did it because I believe, because there is something which always tells you, there is an inner guidance which is always with us. Please trust that guidance. And when you trust that guidance, you do the right thing. And quite often there is a mind and heart conflict. Your mind says something and your heart says something. And people often have this confusion about what to follow, what should we listen to. You just need to trust your intuition. You just need to trust your intelligence. Mind is not intelligence. Mind is just a collection of thoughts. It's a collection of your past memories. It's a collection of your past experiences. So just trust your intelligence and just go with your gut instincts and you will just reach success and you will definitely be different and you will stand out in the crowd. So facing the fear is one most important aspect that we all must do. Just make a list of all the things that you were scared to do until now and uh, try to explore one at a time. So that is uh, uh, the most important thing uh, to be different and uh, patience. Um, now, when you try to do any task for that matter, uh, most of us, we lack patience. I mean, I did have this problem for a long time. Uh, I would want to do something and then I would just uh, be in a rush to finish it and then something doesn't happen and I just give up that task very easily. So patience is one important thing that we all must have because even we all know that Rome was not built in a day. And uh, anything that you would like to do, it takes time. And I've been telling you from the beginning, it's small baby steps. So just be patient and it is going to manifest first over a period of time and along with patience goes your next thing which is perseverance perseverance is not giving up guys you all know about this but then uh, you know it when someone says this when someone emphasizes this it's just a reinforcement for you all to follow this and that is the reason why i'm whatever i'm saying today may be something that you all know anyway but then um, one important takeaway should be to incorporate this into your daily life taking the baby steps, not giving up, jumping out of the comfort zone and then, uh, you know, being in an uncomfortable situation and face your fears and just be smart enough so that you can get the best work, um, you know, out of you. And uh, again, um, you know, this... Um, uh, people always believe in the fact that they cannot achieve certain things. Uh, for example, I would like to quote a story of an elephant. Uh, this is about the societal conditioning or uh, your childhood conditioning. Um, you know, a baby elephant is uh, tied to a tree by a flimsy rope. Yeah, because a baby elephant is a very weak uh, thing and then it tries to rip the rope apart, it tries to rip the chain apart uh, from the tree, baby elephant, because it is weak, it just cannot do that. And if you see in circles, even an adult elephant's leg is tied by a flimsy chain um, to the tree or to a peg 
and an adult elephant would have tried multiple, you know, it doesn't even try because as baby, it would have tried many times and it would have failed. And even when it becomes an adult, it just grows up thinking that I cannot do something. And most of us, we have this experience. You would have tried something as a child. You would have probably, you know, it could be something like as simple as uh, public speaking. Uh, you would have tried to speak in front of public as a, as a child. Somebody would have made a mock of you and then you just try to give up. And this is what all of us do. And uh, that is the reason childhood has got a very strong influence on us. So what we need to do is come out of that. And that is where your reprogramming of your mind comes in. Most of the times we believe uh, that we cannot do certain things. That is kind. That is a limited belief. So try to replace the limited belief with an empowering belief. Now, is this possible? Uh, if you ask me whether it is possible, I would say, yes, it is possible. You can always replace your limiting beliefs with an empowering belief. How do you replace a limiting belief with an empowering belief? If you believe that you cannot do something, if you believe that you cannot uh, come in front of public and speak, if you believe that you cannot swim, uh, if you believe that you cannot drive, it could be n number of things. Just make a list of all the things that you believe until now that you cannot do. You can do it if you replace it with an empowering belief. Now, that is called as reprogramming your subconscious mind. How can you reprogram your subconscious mind? There is a tip that I can give you with regards to the uh, subconscious mind reprogramming. Now, the belief pattern that you have formed is because of your subconscious programming since your childhood, because of the environment, because of your experience, uh, because of the culture. It could be anything, n number of things which shaped you into what you are today. And that is your subconscious mind talking. That is not your conscious mind talking. That is your subconscious mind talking. It is pretty much like a computer. Now, if you can reprogram it, if you can change the software, you can pretty much achieve everything. Now, the best time to reprogram your subconscious mind is just before you go to bed or even when you uh, wake up in the morning. The first thing in the morning when you wake up, you can do you can reprogram your subconscious mind. Now, why am I saying this? Why am I saying you need to reprogram your subconscious mind before you go to bed? It's because you have a state called as an alpha brainwave activity just before you go to bed. Our brain has got alpha, beta, gamma, theta. So these are the different uh, kind of uh, brain waves that you come across. When somebody is in a meditative state, when somebody is sitting and relaxed in a relaxed uh, state, the brain waves have got something called as an alpha state. And during this state, the subconscious mind works at its highest potential. Whatever you say during that particular time, it is going to register in your subconscious mind without your own, um, you know, own belief. You wouldn't even know that it is getting registered in the subconscious mind. And believe me, all our life, this is what has been happening. We've been thinking, we've been thinking something and it just goes and sits quite deep in the subconscious mind. Please change your subconscious mind program by putting in a new program, by feeding a new program at you know, whatever time you go to bed, just before you go to bed, just close your eyes and then just relax and then just try to come up with some kind of an empowering belief. And uh, believe me, it works. And the way it works is you need to do this for 40 days. Most of us, we don't do things long enough. Yeah, you, we tend to give up very easily. We don't do things long enough. Now, why am I saying 40 days? 40 days is one cycle to form a habit. Uh, take any religion for that matter. Um, you know, people follow any tradition for 40 days. Why do they do something for 40 days? If you, uh, if it is Easter Lent or if it is Ramadan or it is uh, Ayapa Mala or it could be any religion, anything for that matter, any custom, any tradition, it is followed for 40 days. And that is the reason, uh, you know, we need to follow this for 40 days because it is considered as one cycle for someone to form a habit. Our parents taught us how to brush our teeth. Yeah, so all of us, we were brushing our teeth and then it just became our habit. I don't think there is any one of us who doesn't brush the teeth. How many of us actually wake up and do exercise first thing in the morning? Most of us, we don't do because we were not taught for 40 days that we should actually go in and exercise. As an adult, all our brains, you know, we are conditioned and we are kind of programmed in a particular way. And when you suddenly have to do something out of the way, it just kind of becomes very difficult for us. And that is the reason anything that you do, please do it for 40 days. 
and don't expect the result within 40 days if you go to gym you just need to work out for so many days before you put on your muscles before you see the results you need to work out you're not going to get results in a day or so similarly your subconscious mind reprogramming you're not going to get the results within a day or so you just need to do it for minimum 40 days and you will start seeing the results if you skip any day in between your day one starts again on the day you skipped so please bear in mind do this for 40 days before you go to bed or first thing in the morning and reprogram your subconscious mind and decondition yourself of all the thoughts all the limiting beliefs that you have uh, had so far and that is it that will change your life for good and it has definitely changed my life and um, i can say with greater emphasis because i have practiced this i did fail when i started because like everyone i tried for a couple of days and i didn't see the results and i gave up please do not give up just because you're not seeing the results the key here is patience perseverance persistence and just hang on to it for minimum 40 days and you will see the result so uh, that is about your subconscious mind uh, reprogramming and as i told you differentiate between your inner coach and an inner critic you know all of us we have got two wolves a good wolf inside of us and a bad wolf which wolf grows is it depends on what wolf you feed okay whether you are you know the the good wolf grows inside of you or whether you are uh, you know the bad wolf grows inside of you depends on which wolf you feed so we have an inner critic and we have inner guidance as well and quite often inner critic is this inner chatter even right now as i'm talking to you all of you you know you probably have got some kind of a negative thing or an inner chatter inside your heads which is happening constantly now whether you listen to that or you chuck that is completely in your hands so stop listening to the inner critic because we are all intelligent beings and we all have got the capacity we all have got an innate potential to discriminate good from bad to discriminate the critic from the guidance listen to your guidance trust your gut trust your intuition and go with it and uh, you know there is no looking back if you do that and uh, and uh, you know and finally uh, you know just last uh, two or three things uh, before i wind this up um, emotional intelligence now how many of us were taught in schools to be emotionally intelligent uh, when i say emotional intelligence you know in children were taught about logical intelligence if somebody doesn't score well in mathematics if somebody doesn't score well in physics or chemistry they are told okay they are not intelligent people but i don't believe uh, you know logical intelligence is what matters in life people might have been uh, you know given gold medals and they would have come first uh, you know in their schools or colleges or whatever but how many of those people are actually unique how many of those people are actually successful in their lives if you just uh, look at them i don't think many people are uh, in in fact i have seen in my own life i have uh, had so many uh, so many of my colleagues or so many of my friends who were not actually scoring good marks but today they are doing exceptionally well in you know in good universities all over the world it's only because emotional intelligence plays an important role now what is emotional intelligence it's about dealing with your emotions it's about handling your emotions how do you handle your emotions you walk down the corridor you see somebody somebody doesn't uh, say good morning to you or somebody doesn't wish you good morning you send a message to somebody said uh, you know they don't reply back to your message you know you kind of uh, you know you feel sad looking at that um you know you somebody overtakes you when you are uh, driving past and then you just lose it and then you start yelling at them so this is these are not the qualities of an emotionally intelligent person now i can give you a tip of how to deal with your emotions before i wind this up the way you deal with your emotions is take a pause take a pause because any emotion for that matter whatever i am saying let's say you become angry somebody passes a comment at you and then you become angry what do you do uh, you know there is a chain of emotions it's a chemical process which happens inside your own body and this chemical process takes about 90 seconds this is called as a 90 second rule you need to allow 90 seconds before the anger comes out comes out of you if somebody disappoints you or you're upset about something just take that 90 second break just walk away from that place or do something but just don't react now it may be hard to start with whatever i'm saying right now 
it may be hard to start with it may be difficult to follow but certainly not impossible it is definitely possible so try to control your emotions for 90 seconds pause is the first thing and the second thing is a reflect on whatever you know somebody has said or whatever you feel just reflect on your own thoughts this is the r i have got something called as a press principle um wherein you kind of pause you reflect then you kind of exhale and um, inhale and you just let go of all your emotions so this is what you need to do this may sound very simple and you know you may think oh it's easy to say it is difficult to follow yes i agree it is easy to say it is difficult to follow but definitely not impossible to follow so try to deal with your emotions we use emotions left right and center on whatsapp maybe we should start using those emotions we should try to understand our own emotions and become more emotionally intelligent and uh, that is the way forward and we should teach all our kids this particular thing and uh, finally i believe in something called as passion i'm sure all of us believe in passion i read this book called as ikigai ikigai is a chinese it's a japanese book and uh, they talk about profession passion mission and vision for all of us all of us you know most of us or rather most of us we focus mainly on the profession forgetting the passion forgetting the mission forgetting the vision I suppose we need to focus on equally on all four things to be happy in life, isn't it? At the end of the day, what really matters for all of us is a happiness. And that is where the passion component uh, comes in. It's never too late and you are never too old to start anything that you desire. So passion plays an important important role for all of us and likewise we all have a mission you need to search you need to go inside to find what your mission is and that just makes your life complete when you follow this ikigai principle i can always uh, share it later uh, you know this particular book it is i k i g a i so uh, please uh, do read it if you have uh, time so ikigai is uh, it's, it's a brilliant brilliant book and uh, never compare yourself with others and that is something that we always do we, especially you know when you look at the facebook or when you look at the social media somebody must be posting flashy pictures or you know uh, whatever they may be doing sometimes we compare ourselves with others please do not compare yourself with others and uh, nobody is your competition you are your own competition and we should try to be better version of ourselves every every single day and uh, and that's about it just trust the process Trust the journey that you are in and uh, don't worry about the outcomes. Um, you know, if you do every single thing and whatever I said, please do it for 40 days because I do believe a lot uh, in manifestation. You know, there is a law of vibration or the law of manifestation. I do believe a lot in that. Vibrate at a higher level. When I say vibrate at a higher level, this comes with gratitude. Quite often we criticize, we complain, we criticize the government, we complain about people, we blame COVID for whatever disaster happened in our lives. We do all kinds of things. And when you do that, we are attracting more of negative things into our own lives. So if you want to be unique, if you want to be different, try to do, try to put in all these things uh, that I have shared with you. This is from my own experience that I'm uh, sharing with you. And I'm sure you will see the change. There is, this is beyond a doubt. And finally, just be you. Don't try to be someone else. Um, sometimes, you know, you we try to be like someone else and then we just completely lose the plot. We try to please people around us and we lose the plot. And when we try to be ourselves, uh, not everybody would like us, but that's absolutely fine. When you are yourself, you are unique because we are all unique masterpieces in this particular world. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, let me take some uh, questions as we go along uh, to see um, if I could answer any of the uh, questions. We have uh, one question, um, which is in the fast paced work, work life where everything is passed to you as a priority. How do we filter it using the 80-20 rule? Yeah. Now, <laughs> it's a very good question and it's a very difficult one to answer as well. See, um, everything is passed on to us as a priority and that is where we need to use our intelligence. Not everything is a priority. There are certain things which are considered as a priority when you try to please somebody else. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, Let's say uh, this Sunday, I've got a lot of events lined up. Uh, somebody has asked me to come on a Zoom call for a webinar. Uh, somebody has invited me for a birthday party. And uh, in the morning, I've got to spend time with my family and I've got to prepare for a presentation next week, etc. Now, a lot of these things are there. Now, unfortunately, 
you know if i try to please every single person uh, because everything is everything is actually important and every single person there out is important but sometimes we need to learn to say no within the priority list you have the you know the most urgent ones or the ones that you cannot really you can always get back to them you can always catch up at another date um, i'm sure people you know if if you are really good friends with them they can understand uh, pretty much so you need to kind of learn to say no when you learn to say no you understand what your priorities are and things become a lot more easier uh, the second question is what do you think is the role of consistency to get to uh, top 5% um yeah very much uh, consistency is uh, definitely uh, one of the most important things and i've been uh, telling about the consistency is pretty much what i said about the 40 40 day rule or the 40 day principle that i was talking about is about being um, consistent as well in what you do and uh, you can be consistent provided you don't lose it halfway through and uh, consistency comes with focus comes with determination now uh, when but unfortunately we live in such a fast paced modern world uh, we lose the consistency when we lose the focus and when do we lose the focus it's because of the distractions all around us um, there are so many people and you know nowadays your touch screen your phone is enough to distract you netflix is enough to distract you the media is enough to distract you and when we lose the focus we lose our efficiency and when we lose the efficiency we lose the consistency so yes consistency plays a very important role for all of us to get to the top 5 um i hope uh, that was a reasonable answer how do you build your emotional intelligence yeah uh, the emotional intelligence is all about uh, you know self awareness emotional intelligence comes in there are um, you know four principles in emotional intelligence which is probably for another day but the most important the first principle is all about your self awareness and self management most of us we are working in an autopilot mode how many of us actually Uh, respond to a situation most of us we react somebody says something and it's an impulsive behavior from all of us and then we just kind of without even pausing without even reflecting we just kind of you know uh, react to them so like they say life is only 10% of what is happening to us and 90% is how you react to it so emotional intelligence it comes in when you have an awareness about your own self and awareness about your own self it comes in when you go within this may sound philosophical but actually this is not uh, it may be philosophical but quite important for each one of us and self management then comes your public management or you know managing other people first we need to manage our own self when you manage your own self when you strike a peace with your own self you can strike a peace with everyone around you when you lack peace inside of you when you are not aware of what is going on inside of you it is very difficult to strike a balance with people around you and that is where we lose the plot um how do you think uh, journaling can help improve oneself uh, yes very good point uh, journaling yes i always um, carry a diary with me so that's a very <laughs> important uh, point that you brought in and uh, journaling really uh, helps because uh, let's say you have a negative emotion and uh, uh, or uh, you know any thought which is actually worrying you when you actually putting your thoughts whether it is a negative thought or it could be a positive affirmation both for positive and negative things journaling really helps because when you write down something you are putting everything down there if you have lot of emotional baggage uh, you know if you you worried about something or you're not liking something just write it on a piece of paper and actually chuck it in the bin make it into you know uh, you know uh, kind of small pieces and chuck it in the bin and there is something that you really want to do in life just make a journal just write everything down you can put in your affirmations whatever you want to do that really helps to streamline your own thoughts because sometimes we have these random chain of thoughts inside of us and journaling helps to put these thoughts into perspective it gives you a better understanding and it just kind of as you're writing you kind of you know it emphasizes or it stresses more on your brain um and the next question also to what extent do you think healing is therapeutic and can be uh, resorted to a visavis therapy yes um now when we say healing uh, people uh, quite often healing to them is uh, you know going to a doctor uh but it's not necessarily that uh we all of us we have a physical mental we have a physical body we have a mental or an emotional body and a spiritual body or an energy body that you may call of and this is what we are talking as uh the vibes 
uh, I'm talking about the vibes here. Now, healing is something that we do at the level of your energies. All of us, we may be successful in our lives, but most of us, we are not happy in our lives. So being su successful is not equal to being happy in life. If you want to be happy in life, then what we need to do is heal ourselves at the energy level. And when you heal yourself at the energy level, you have a lot of clarity in your vision. You, you know, we don't get confused. We don't have, uh, you know, heart mind conflict. We don't have right and left brain, uh, you know, uh, asynchronicity rather. Yeah. So all of us, we have got a right brain, which is an irrational brain and a left brain, which is a logical brain. Your logic right now is telling you whatever she's saying is crap. Okay, where is this energy body? I cannot see the energy body. Whereas your right brain says, yeah, maybe yes, there may be some energy body. Now, when you have a right and left brain conflict, it is a logic versus magic. So this is what happens when our energy body uh, kind of, you know, is not in harmony, is not in sync with us. When we heal the energy body, everything comes in alignment. You are aligned with the universe and you get what you want in your life when it is aligned. Uh, so that is where uh, the healing comes in. And uh, the last question uh, is, was that one. So I hope this was uh, a useful session to you all. Mm -hmm.